In this video, we're going to look at how we can break electrochemical cells down into two half cells and look at the individual reactions occurring at those half cells. So starting off with the prototypical example of an electrochemical cell that we had from the previous video, we have tin solid reacting with aqueous nickel ions to form aqueous tin ions and nickel solid. So what we want to do is we want to separate these this reaction into two half cell reactions okay so how can we do this well the first one we could write down would be nickel 2 plus plus two electrons yields nickel solid and that's what occurred. That is a reduction. And we remember our mnemonic red cat. So reduction occurs at the cathode in the direction that we've drawn here. If we want, we also uh, are going to want this to be reversible later. So what we can do is we can take, for example, this arrow here. And instead of making that a one way arrow, we can take that arrow and make that a reversible arrow. So we're going to make that go reversibly. And in the reverse, of, in the reverse direction, it would be an oxidation occurring uh, at the anode. And then our other half cell reaction, which is occurring here, is tin solid, which is becoming tin 2 plus in the aqueous phase and generating two electrons. And that is an oxidation, which occurs at the anode. An ox, oxidation, oil rig, oxidation is loss. OK, so that's one type of the uh, a given half cell that can occur, um, these two types that are right here. Because if you reverse one of these, then they're both really the same type. You have a you have some metal, which is an electrode, which produces electrons and aqueous ions. And that's an example of this type 1 electrode that we have up here in one type of half cell. But there are really four main types of half cells that we want to talk about, which are going to give us an indication of what the, what the large majority of t half cells are that we're going to see. So uh, going through these, one through four. So why don't I just write these one, two, three, four. <clears throat> okay, so our first, our first reaction here is the type of thing that we've been seeing all along in these first two videos. And that's where you have some solid metal, which is an electrode. And then that produces aqueous metal ions where N is however many electrons you're going to produce there and whatever the charge on the ion is, plus N number of electrons. Uh, in both of these reactions, N would be two. Okay, so you're in equ your, your reversible reaction here occurs between aqueous ions and a metal solid metal electrode. A second type of reaction that can occur is where you have a solid metal and it's wrapped in a foil with... Um, some type of salt of that metal as well, and then there are aqueous ions of that metal in solution. And the, ha the net half cell reaction which occurs here is going to be the solid metal plus N counter ions. In this case, I'm saying that, that our counter ion just has a charge of minus one, for example, like uh, chloride. But it could be some other ion, it could be some other charge, but this is the type of example that I'm going to be given here. Okay, and that goes to the metal salt plus N electrons. And this actually occurs in two steps. So the first of these two steps is where you have the solid metal going back and forth between itself and the aqueous ion. Okay, so that, that, first, that first case is the same as we've been seeing all along. 
we have just a metal electrode producing ions and electrons. But then the second step is that those aqueous ions, instead of just continuing to exist in solution as they do, they turn right around and then they interact with the counter ion in solution and then they precipitate and deposit back onto this foil back on which is on top of the electrode so we have MXN solid so the net is that you have the metal and some solution counter ion forming a metal salt and some electrons which then can go through our wire into the other half cell all right our third type of reaction which can occur down here is a hydrogen electrode which is kind of an example of how all gas electrodes could work. So you have one half of H2 gas, stoichiometric, stoichiometric uh, equivalent of one half, going back and forth between H+, plus, usually in solution with HCl, hydrochloric acid, plus, and then that will generate an electron. So what you have here is, you have the hydrogen gas, which is being bubbled in through some inlet, bubbled in through the solution, over an inert metal electrode. So it's a metal which doesn't interact. It just allows electrons to flow back and forth. So it gets bubbled over that, and it reacts with the hydrogen ions in solution. So it can produce hydrogen ions and then an electron, which will flow out of this half cell into the other side. And then that gas can flow out at the top. And this can be a standard hydrogen electrode if you have both the gas at a pressure of one bar or a fugacity of one bar and the, hyd the hydrogen ions at a molarity of one molar or an activity of one molar uh, as well. And we're going to see more about the standard hydrogen electrode later. And the final kind, which we can look at here, is where you have the reaction between a metal ion and another metal ion in aqueous solution. And there's an inert metal electrode such as say platinum or steel or various other or uh, carbon, various kinds of inert types of electrodes. So you have an aqueous ion with some charge N and then it goes to an aqueous ion of some greater charge M and then it produces however many electrons are the difference between those. Examples of this would include like iron 2 and iron 3, and then you would produce one electron going from a 2 plus to a 3 plus charge. But as you can see, they both exist in the aqueous solution, and the electrode is just a means for them to exchange electrons, and then for that electron to be transported uh, to the other half cell.